Well, I am always amazed by how much Paul has to say about uh, so many things in so few words. It's uh, an ability that I've never captured. <laughs> um, but in the first two verses, he talked about how our relationship with those who are chronologically older than us. He talked about our relationship with young men. He talked about our relationship with young women. And now in verse 3, he shifts the conversation and spends quite a bit of time talking about widows. And uh, this may seem like a kind of a strange degree of emphasis, but widowhood was far more comp common in Paul's day than it is today because people didn't live for a long time. We know that in, in New Testament times that the life expectancy in general, throughout the Roman world at least, was about 30 years of age. That doesn't mean that people didn't live to be 60 or 70, but if you reach 70 years of age, you were considered to be extremely aged. And um, and to some degree, that that's true. You know, the the aging process is is slower or faster in different people. I think in the end of the day, it has a lot to do with lifestyle, but I think it also has to do with your genetics. But you understand that there was such a high mortality rate uh, at birth that you know up to half the babies died within the first year or two of life. They were so vulnerable and susceptible to so many things. They lived in a world was, which plagued by all sorts of viruses and bacteria and other things that uh, we have been able to um, escape their ravages in many ways through modern medicine and also through better hygiene and better nutrition. Uh, better nutrition is a major factor because a lot of people in the ancient world really were unhealthy because they were deprived of enough food. They spent most of their life being pretty hungry. So, but, so widowhood became something very common. In fact, uh, most women, most females were married between the ages of 12 and 16 years. Um, when a woman came into puberty and became uh, really unable to bear children, she was considered to be marriageable. And when you realize that people many times knew they were only going to live to be 25 or 30 years of age, uh, there was no time to waste. So people tended to get married early and usually the young women were married someplace between 12 and 16. If you were a woman and you were 17, 18 years of age, you were considered an old maid and your chances of getting married began to go down pretty significantly. Uh, and so basically we find that uh, many women married very young and they usually the young men were someplace between 15 and 21 or 22 years of age. Uh, they would have been older, old enough to have a skill and be able to earn a living and support a family. And that's all that was required. And I would say that it wasn't a whole lot different when my wife and I first got married because we got married at 20. Um, and today that would be considered really, really young. It wasn't unusual for us in that time because at, at 20 years of age, I could go get a job framing houses. Uh, and maybe even though they pay, paid like $1.65 an hour, um, I could make enough money to rent an apartment, uh, to own a car, pay for the gas, put food on the table, do all the things that were necessary to clothe and care for a wife and children. And and uh, it's, it's a very different world. I remember when I I was 16, I was working on a job working for our county irrigation district, and I was it was really exciting because my mom knew the guy running it and got me a job there at 16. Most of the guys were in their 20s, and it paid really well. I got, I got paid $2.50 an hour, and man, I thought I was in hog heaven. I'd never made so much money in my life, and I realized as I'm working with these men that these men were married and had families and were supporting their families on that salary. Well, life was less expensive, the dollar was worth more, and also we had lower expectations. Well, think about that in terms of the ancient world, that people got married young, and oftentimes uh, they passed away very early in life. Uh, my father-in-law, for example, his, his dad died when he was two years old, uh, and he was 39 years of age when he died. Uh, he died from, from uh, typhus, and you know, something today that we might be able to treat very easily, but in those days, it didn't last long. My dad's first wife died when uh, she probably was about 18 when she passed away from a staph infection in her sinuses. And so, you know, that was a really a common thing. So today we, we see it differently and think about it differently because we tend to live longer and we delay marriage because it's too expensive. But in the ancient world, widowhood was very common. And I'll add this point as well. 
that following uh, the COVID uh, uh, epidemic, uh, we have far more widows in our church now than we did beforehand. Uh, it's been crazy because in in up to uh, you know 2021, 20, 22, we would do like 12, 13 funerals a year, and uh, I remember in one year we did 41. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's like triple the number of deaths. And there were a lot of, uh, lot of men and women who were between 18 and 64, which are the ages in which the insurance companies are willing to insure you because your chance of dying, according to their calculations, is very, very low. And so you're a good investment. You pay them money and their chance of having to pay for your death benefits is so small. And that flipped. In fact, it was... Uh, it was the insurance industry that published the things that said there had been like this significant, like 400% increase in deaths in this age group. And most of them weren't because of COVID. Most of them were co due to uh, other things that personally I think were related to COVID vaccines. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it, it really has changed some of my views and the dynamics because we just have a lot of a lot more widows in our congregation than we used to have. But one of the things that Paul says in 1 Timothy 5.3 is he says, give proper recognition to those widows who are really in need. And then verse 5, I'll jump ahead a little bit because these tie together. He says, the widow is really in need and left alone, puts her hope in God and continues night and day to pray and to ask God for help. But the widows who live, live for pleasure is dead even while she lives. Now, again, the dynamics he's talking about here are a little bit removed from ours because um, he said that there are women who are widows and they are really in need. In other words, they don't have any family uh, to turn to. They don't have any economic resources. Uh, they're really quite destitute. And that was pretty common and still is very common in much of the world. I remember uh, I used to teach in India every year and, and there were many, many women who were widowed. And in that culture, if you're a younger woman and you don't have any family and you're widowed, uh, really one of the only choices you have to survive is to go into uh, the, uh, the sex trade. Basically, women would be forced into prostitution uh, because they simply couldn't get a job. Or if they had no men to protect them, they were taken advantage and abused by men and put into various kinds of servitude. It's it's kind of thing that we don't think about uh, sexual slavery as being something that's that common, but it's very common. It's widespread around the world, and of course, it lives under the surface, even within our own culture. And the whole point is that Paul was saying that there are some widows who uh, will choose that lifestyle. They'll choose to go in that direction. And he said, uh, don't bring them into the number. Well, what is the number? The number is those who are financially supported by the church. And basically, uh, his exhortation as we go on will be that if you have family, that you should look to your family for those needs to be met and for that support. Uh, and uh, if you can and work and make gainful employment, you should choose that. Because the church is not called to be basically a social service in the sense of our primary goal is to provide for those who are without and, and have needs. Now, the bottom line is when we have people who genuinely have needs, we have a Christian obligation to respond to those. But Paul is telling Timothy, he says, you know, be careful and, and vet these women out to make sure that they're people who are truly in need, who are truly widows, and who have been literally left all alone. And he says, secondly, what you need to say is, are they women who are seeking God? Uh, are they, do they continue night and day in prayer and ask God for his help? And, and, or are they women who are basically saying, I need to find a husband, and they're going around looking for a man to relieve their difficulties? It's really basically Paul would say later on to the, to the Corinthians that when you become widowed or a widower, uh, the best thing for you to do is commit yourself to seeking the Lord and live for the Lord. But he doesn't say that by commandment. He just says, I, that's my recommendation so you can serve the Lord with this out of distraction. But he's making, a, I think, a really, really important issue here, important point, is that 
regardless of what our situation is, that we need to always make Christ the priority. And when it comes to giving money to pe- help people who are in difficult situations, we need to do that with prayer and consideration and evaluation. Will they use those forms in a way that's honoring to God? Or will they simply uh, indulge in lifestyles that are unhealthy and unholy? Okay, boy, this is turning into be a really tough series of messages here, isn't it? Well, one more. We'll wrap it up this week as we continue in our conversation about widows and um, see what Paul has to say in the following verses. God bless you.